this discussion is part of a wider discussion that is reflecting uh, a, a, the public's perception that they uh, don't have control over their elected official. And we're certainly witnessing this Tea Party phenomena in, um, in the U.S. But as I listen to what they're actually asking for or expecting, um, the, we get um, not very clear direction. So frankly, you know, I don't, I don't know that what's being suggested by that group is very helpful to their elected representative in trying to represent them. Um, but I, I do see this as part of a larger issue around people's uh, misunderstanding or lack of understanding around how the process works and um, their frustration that they can't make their elected uh, person change the way they're presenting or reacting to an issue. The, um, the member for Glenmore started out by saying, well, there's nothing the public can do. That's it, they're stuck for five years, shut the door, it's over. And I just don't find that to be the case. Um, I think, you know, where I've had people uh, complain to me about the actions of a member, whether in the government caucus or in my caucus, I've directed them to the whip, uh, who has a job that is about uh, ensuring discipline in caucus, but that also means the discipline of the caucus and making sure that their members are representing them well outside of that caucus. So if there's somebody, and I can think of examples where there was an elected member who didn't keep office hours um, and was very hard to get hold of, and there was a fuss made in that government caucus to the individual and he was um, you know, told that he should have an accessible office where people didn't have to phone up and make an appointment. Um, I can, uh, you know, think of other ones where there's been complaints about it. Um, so, I mean, let's be realistic here. I think that uh, the public does have a number of different ways of uh, trying to achieve some kind of resolution if they're very unhappy with the way uh, their elected member is responding to them. The whip is one of them. Complaining to the leader is another one. Again, that leader doesn't want the hassle of, well, we actually had somebody thrown out of my caucus because they were just, uh, they, caught, they took up so much of the leader's time uh, in trying to resolve the difficulties that this person had created that finally they were, they were asked to leave the caucus that I'm in. Um, so appealing to the leader is another way. Um, you can appeal to the other caucus members, and I think if I'm hearing things correctly today, there was a decision made by caucus uh, to uh, discipline one of their members. Um, in a larger um, parliamentary uh, way, there's the, uh, I'm not going to get the name of this committee right, Privileges, Elections, Printing and Something uh, Committee. Um, which is a formal uh, way that you can protest the behavior of one of our elected members. And a committee does review their actions and there is um, discipline meted out from that. And never underestimate the power of public pressure. Never! I've seen public pressure turn all kinds of things around in politics in Alberta. Um, you know, and with the public pressure goes uh, if, if there is enough public pressure, along with that always comes media um, spotlight. And that can certainly change someone's behavior or have them back off or uh, be able to help the caucus or the whip or whatever convince the individual that uh, that's not the direction that they want to be going or that they're not representing people adequately. So to say that there's nothing that people can do, I just don't buy that. There is lots that people can do and do do. Uh, and I have examples of just about every, of everything, actually, that I just discussed there. So I heard another member talk about, well, you know, you can get elected and just disengage after a few weeks. Which strikes me as very odd, because I'm sure that um, for all those that are from the class of, what the hell was the last election? 2008. Um, 
they, they'd agree with me that you don't even know what's going on after a few weeks, never mind disengaging. You're full of, of uh, uh, things that you need to learn and do and fill out and get on top of. Uh, it's a beehive of activity, so I don't know how you could disengage unless it was with the assistance of some sort of uh, chemically altering <laughs> something. Uh, so I can't see that you're disengaging after a few weeks or, you know, even after a few years. I mean, what I've seen is that it takes you a good couple of years to really learn the rules here where you start to groove along with the, with the routine and the rhythm of the house. And at that point, yeah, okay, you might get to that point and go, you know what, I really hate this stuff. I've learned how to do it and it just does not work for me. Fair enough. I've had a caucus member that felt that way. He still tootled along for the remaining year and a half doing his job and then just didn't run again. But the idea that someone would just check out, well, if they're that miserable, they're going to quit the darn job and go and do something else. They're not going to sit there in the, in the back row twiddling their thumbs and being grumpy. Why would you bother? Life's too short. So um, I, uh, or even, even the idea that someone didn't expect to get elected and then did get elected. Again, I have, I've served with individuals. I remember looking at one person on election night and I thought, wow, their eyes are like, you know how they talk about somebody's eyes are like saucers? This guy's eyes were like saucers. He clearly did not think he was going to get elected. And he did, and he was the most engaged, energetic, uh, enthusiastic member of my caucus uh, for for that term. Um, so, uh, yeah. you know, the f why would you run if you didn't want to get elected? I, that's, I'm sorry, but that just seems, it's such a, um, a, an enormous amount of time and energy and money and that of your families. Why on earth would you get into that if you didn't at least have some uh, ideas of what you would do when you got elected? So the whole idea of how, and I've checked this petition, the, their petitioning process it, that's described in 208 against some of the others, and 33% is not a high enough percentage. Uh, most of the good, um, well, no, let me be careful here. Um, I would venture to say that if you look at how many, many members were elected by f around 50%, um, you've got people that are on the right um, vibe with their constituency. Um, they, they do reflect the views of the people who've elected them. And they're going to weather that storm. And I have been, uh, I am so fortunate and so honored to represent uh, the people in Edmonton Centre who are an unending source of um, enthusiasm and advice and guidance for me. Um, and I so love representing them. Um, but we're on pretty much the same vibe, and so we don't, we don't counter each other, actually never. Um, and I get a few people who disagree with the way I've gone on something, but overwhelmingly I get people saying, that's what we wanted, thank you very much, that's exa exactly where you want us to go. Um, so I think that the recall of 33% is far too low. The other part of this is around that package, um, and the only part of that kind of Tea Party Democratic far right wing package that uh, I hear talked about that I am interested in is citizen initiatives, which gets an idea onto the floor of the assembly. But the other stuff about um, proposals, I mean, I just look to the U.S. and go, they're, they're in gridlock in California because of those direct uh, proposals and direct votes. Look at what Envision Edmonton did to the city of Edmonton, for God's sake, and how much money it cost us for a petition process that was not even in order. And, that, and what you end up with, bottom line, is the one with the most money wins. And that is not democracy. So I find this package of stuff, which includes recall, generally comes from people who want things their way and, and they will get money behind them to make it their way. And that, to me, is not democracy. You should be able to have a good debate with no money on either side. Um, and these usually involve somebody pushing a particular idea that's got the money to get it out there, has got the money to hire the people, the office, to print the stuff. Uh, and that's not why we're in here. Um, so 